I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 16th of November, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life. Living in Latin America today, I'm in Cochabamba, Bolivia. This is my first full day here in the city, and I'm going to do my first walk through a part of the city so you can see it. This is our chance to actually start seeing Bolivia. Everything up until now has been like logistics of getting to Bolivia. This is the start of let's show you Bolivia, and this is absolutely beautiful part of the city. I'm already out of wind as I walk through. We're at 8,000 feet, so as I do some of these shows and I walk around, I run out of air a little bit faster than usual, which happens anyway on the show. So whew, I'm going to be doing my best to keep up with all of you, but this area is just beautiful. I'm going to show you this park here at Fidel Anse uh, in the north, a little bit northeastern part of the city. It's quite a big city, so we can only show so much of it, but I want to walk on today's episode and really give you a feel for what this neighborhood looks like because it is gorgeous and completely not what you're expecting from Bolivia. This is Fidel Anse Park. One of the nicer parts of Bolivia, very popular with uh, people who are visiting the city. And it is just loaded with apartment buildings, restaurants, cafes, ice cream and chocolate shops, park activities, absolutely gorgeous. So these are almost all apartment buildings. There are some houses, condos, definitely some businesses. The park continues across the street over there. And we've got some sports complex stuff there. And then my, this is my apartment building right there. So we're starting really close to where I am starting at, but I want to, I'm gonna to try to show a little bit of the park here because the park is absolutely gorgeous. Really nice, one of these long narrow parks that winds through a part of the city. Uh, we did some, with a park like this in Guatemala, it was fantastic, right? It makes for such a livable area but I also want to come down and show. So this part of the city, all of the city, I think, everything I've seen, which I've seen quite a bit of the city at this point by car, really is much more modern, much more urbane than I think most people are going to anticipate. There's a lot of nice vehicles. There's a lot of beautiful outdoor, modern high rise dining and cafes. So this is a restaurant and cafe. See, lots of outdoor seating options because this part of the country is pleasant weather all year round. There's really never a time that it gets super hot, never a time that it gets super cold. We're very close to the equator, but we are south of the equator. So remember, seasons are reversed from what you're used to. Uh, but because we're high in the mountains, the weather stays cool, but because we're at the equator, it stays even year round. So this is that part of the world that has just really amazing weather, if you can handle the thin air because uh, it's it's very walkable all the time. It makes for a great outdoor lifestyle. And right now, for those of you who know, I'm normally in, in Nicaragua in shorts and a t-shirt, and now I'm in a button down and jeans and sneakers. And if I'm just sitting outside, I actually feel a little bit chilly, just the tiniest bit, it's not bad. But at night, it's been getting down to 16 degrees. During the day, it's in the 20s. So it's very nice, very, very nice weather. We've had only the tiniest sprinkling of rain since I've been here. Mostly it's clear skies, absolutely beautiful. And I mentioned on yesterday's episode that the air up here, it's not a desert, but it is quite dry, which is nice for a lot of reasons, uh, but be aware you gotta stay hydrated, but it does make you able to handle the weather even more. Lots of cars that you're not used to, Lots of brands that aren't available other places. I saw a Lana from Russia just this morning. I love the high rises. They're not super high rises, right? They're all kind of mid rises, I guess. But serious, cool apartments and condos rising in the park, but it's not so densely packed as to make it feel enclosed. But there are construction projects all over the city with new buildings like this coming up all the time. Oh, we got something going on over here. It's a lot of people.
Gonna do our best to cross the road here. We're in the mountains, so flash flooding is a risk. When it rains, it can really come come down pretty pretty strong. You can see the name of the park here. Got to wait for some traffic. That is a house. What I find interesting in my first little bit of time here in Bolivia is that in some ways, especially on arrival, I found it to feel so much like Nicaragua, especially at the airport. But here in Cochabamba, it is such a completely different experience. This is so urbane, such a city city. Even though it's it's not that large, I mean, it's much larger than our, like Leon where I live, right? But it's, it's not a huge city population wise, but it has such a closed in population because of the mountains. In the distance, I hope you can see it on the, the GoPro, way out there is the statue of Christ rising on the mountain on the other side of the city. That is quite far away from where we are. But so this is a city that is just loaded with parks and tall buildings in a dense area. And it has a fair amount of traffic. And dogs, lots of dogs. But it seems to make for very good urban living where you get the feeling of big city and a lot of the amenities of big city but you also get a good amount of parks and a scale that is very approachable. It's also a very affordable city. Uh, my, my Airbnb here, I mentioned it the other day, which is only a studio, it's very small, but right on this park, only $20 a night for an Airbnb. So you can imagine just, just how affordable it would be to rent full time or to buy here in the city, uh, I talked to my friend who's local and does a lot with construction, and he said that the apartment that I'm staying in, remember, very small studio, but nicely appointed and absolutely fantastic location. And he said to buy that would be about 60,000 US. And that's in a building with, you know, uh, security at the front door and right in the middle of all the restaurants. So that, that's a very approachable price for for this kind of city living. And you can see every every couple of buildings there's another restaurant or cafe, tea shop, ice cream shop, something. Always something to do in this along this park. If you're wondering about internet service, I, uh, many of you know I have T-Mobile because I'm a world traveler. T-Mobile works here no problem. Showed up and it just works. Of course it's slow. It's always slow when you're away from the US, but uh, no problems getting Google Maps to load a little bit slowly. No problems getting email or anything like that. So it's all been very easy. little path across the park. If you're wondering about the power here, this is South America. So they do things a little bit differently, but effectively we're on the same systems that you expect. So here, everywhere I've been uses the combined type A, type C ports. 
So that lets you plug in standard American plugs that are two prong, not three prong, that's a type B, and lets you plug in the standard European round hole ports. That's a type C, you put them in together, they make a combined port. It's very popular in this part of the world because you get as many Europeans as you do North Americans here. So no matter where you're coming from, it just works. This is where we went for breakfast this morning, co-work cafe, very nice. I had a smoked salmon bagel. You can hear that I'm running out of air. I need to pause for a minute and catch up a little bit. But it is worth noting, the power here is 50 hertz, not 60 hertz. I noticed this on my GoPro videos. If there were lights, I could see them flickering in the background. I was like, oh, I gotta look that up. So I looked it up. Now, if you don't know, if you have electronics like a laptop or a GoPro or a cell phone, anything with like a charging block, they don't care if you're 50 or 60 hertz. So you're all set. Just, just ignore that. Those are generally two prong. Everything will just work for you. If you have a three prong device, you will have to have an adapter to take your three prong to two prong. That's normal, you're used to that. If you're in Nicaragua, we almost never have three prong either. Here, I've never seen anyone without the dual American European two prong system, um, which we have quite a bit of in Nicaragua but we also have a bit of just North American two prong. The difference is here, most of the appliances I've seen are European, not North American. So just something to be a little bit aware of. So, but if you are using something other than a laptop, other than a cell phone, something without a charging system, so something with a motor, a shaver, hair dryer, something like that, those generally care about the cycles that you're on and they can burn out at 50 hertz so be aware that those kinds of things are not universal but the other types of, of electronics generally are so the things you'd normally travel with the things that are normally of concern they should work just fine no adapters needed but be aware you are never going to find a three prong anywhere all right, I've been taking a minute to catch my breath here in the park. I think I'm doing okay. You gotta be careful up here. Everybody warns you about all the things you need to do and not do and like, it's only 8,000 feet, but coming from sea level, I've been living at sea level for a few years now. It is a pretty dramatic uh, jump up. While I'm recording this, this is actually, I'm not even gonna try to tell you which day is which thing happening in real time. Uh, I'm gonna turn the camera back around. Uh, Alan has, while I'm recording this, I just got the message that he has boarded his plane to come down here. It's gonna be several days before he's actually here, both because um, I'm recording this one day after and it takes him two days to get down here because uh, he's going to Santa Cruz. He's doing the same path that I did, but so he will be here later in the week uh, and we'll be heading to La Paz together because that is where our office is. That's why he's coming down, but he's got to acclimate in Cochabamba with us as well. So that is, that is the plan that's going on. Now, one of the things about Cochabamba is this is a major university town. So tons of universities here, not in this part of the city, as far as I know. Uh, I've seen quite a few of them. They're in different parts of the city, but it makes for a very uh, youthful population, much like Leon, Nicaragua, when you have universities everywhere it really changes what the city is like it means a lot more nightlife a lot more restaurants a lot more interesting things check out this cookie truck this looks amazing i did not bring cash so worth noting one of the things that i find in bolivia so i say oh and this also goes with what i was saying earlier the ways that it's so different from Nicaragua. Nicaragua does accept credit cards, but they work heavily on cash. You really want to have cash all the time. Here in Bolivia, I haven't taken out any cash yet. I've not hit an ATM, haven't even tried. Have had zero need. Every single place that we go uh, takes credit cards. And they don't just take credit cards, they expect you to use credit cards. They're fine with cash, but they expect you to use credit cards. So there's no surprise, there's no like, oh, oh, I guess we can take a credit card. Nothing like that. Every single place, the shops that I've been to, uh, cut, uh, the, the, the immigration, um, every restaurant, every single thing has been a credit card. And it's worth noting, they have all been contactless and it's worked every single time. I have had no more than say two 
successful contactless credit card experiences in the US or Nicaragua in all my years. And I truly mean that. I've never gotten it to work. And here in Bolivia, in both cities that I've been in, in every single situation, no one has had to swipe or uh, chip my card a single time. It has worked perfectly every time. Quite often they expect a pin. So be aware that this is a, what's called a chip and pin country. So they often expect you to have a pin when using the credit card. So just make sure you know what your pin is. A lot of Americans don't know what their pins are and then are like, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, but they also be prepared. You can really see the statue of the Christ here in a couple different spots up. And that, that, that hill is actually in the middle of the city. The city goes all the way around that mountain. So it's quite a large city overall, both physically and in number of people. Let this car go. Nice big park over here. So what they do when they ask for your pin is they actually randomize the numbers that they show you. And this is for security. So someone watching from the side can't figure out what you've been. Oh my gosh, Route 66 from the United States. Ha ha ha. They can't dis figure out what, you've, what, what numbers you've pressed by looking at you from the side. They'd have to actually see what the randomized numbers on the, the pad were. So it's a level of security I've never seen in North America ever. Uh, very cool. Uh, and how well the credit cards work, how well the contact list works, how well the, the randomized pin, well, there's so many little tiny pieces and every single place has working computers and they don't force you to take paper factures or, or paper receipts they, they'll give one if you ask. They're like, oh, you want to receive it? Like, nope. And Nicaragua, US, they, they generally require that you take that paper and it's just trash. Who's, who's going to store that? Oh, oh, that was $3? Let me, let me store that so I can tell my accountants about it. No, that's not what happens, right? Normal people can't, and you can't claim uh, your, your McDonald's dinner on anything, right? It that's, doesn't work that way. So what are you supposed to do with that receipt? Nothing. It's just trash. It's just all this garbage being generated. And here, they don't do that. And so it's, it's fantastic. So it's, it's funny. It's little, simple things. But so far, my experience, especially in Cochabamba, but in both, what a, what a gorgeous little condominium building right there, the Marbella. Bolivia feels dramatically more technologically savvy and advanced than the US in everyday interactions. It's just, it, it feels more polished. It feels more like they've got working systems that are more uh, stable and I don't know. It's, it's, it's just a feeling I get. I haven't been here very long, but every time I return to the US, I'm always shocked by how poorly everything works, how sloppy it all is, how many obvious technological capabilities we should have and just aren't, aren't there and uh, here it feels like they've got a few of those things together. It is known as the Silicon Valley of, of South America and Cochabamba specifically is, is a very high tech city, partially because of the universities. So, you know, there's a certain amount of, that just makes sense. But check out what a gorgeous area this is. Great parks, so many great places to live on these parks. This is such a huge amount of the population can live in this area. This is great. I'm really glad that this part of the city was recommended to me. This really is the kind of area where you want to be. If you're just gonna be here for a week, this works out perfectly. I'm gonna get myself lost on this particular walk. It's my first walk with you guys. I'm gonna get lost and not be able to find my way back. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can navigate. It's not too hard. This part of the city is quite modern. <clears throat> I think we're gonna come up on the, and there's a name for it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna not know what it is, but there is a really cool bike path. I'm really hoping you see these mountains outside the city here. Very, very cool. Oh yes, I did find the bike path, so I'm going to show this. 
actually. There's a pedestrian way here that I've not seen before. Okay, rather a bit of traffic, so I wanna show this. That is a very beautiful walk. So the parking, you can see the mountains are on every side of the city. It is not like mountains on just one portion. Here's this kind of sidewalk going through. So I wanna show this here. There's this cool, colorful thing that indicates something, but I don't know what it is. So this is a school zone. So I don't know if this is just a high school or what, but this is, this is a school here, or maybe dorms for a school. And then this is a pedestrian way going somewhere interesting, but I'm not gonna go that far. But then down below us here, I wanna show this. This is the bike path. And this goes through the entire city. It is a complete bicycle highway. You can see the rainbow colors down there where it goes uh, probably underneath the road in some way. And then we're gonna show it again over here so we can walk alongside it to some degree because it is very cool. I have seen very few cities in the world that have put in bike paths like this. I have no idea if we get tr in trouble for walking on this. I mean, obviously I can walk right here, but I don't think I can walk through the city on this, but it is really, really amazingly well done. This is a two direction, dedicated bicycle path running through the heart of the city. Who has that? All right, that guy's walking on the path. That's, that's encouraging that maybe I can do that and uh, uh, not get in trouble. But I feel like I should be over here on the sidewalk and do it. This is the walking right here, just inches away. And you can see the boat. There's someone else walking on it. We're going to pay attention. Maybe we can walk on it and, and that'll be cool. I don't want to be the rude tourist who's like, oh, I can't use that path for the thing I want to do. If I take enough breaks from talking, then I don't run out of air. And some of you have said, you know, Scott, you don't have to talk every moment that you're walking. Feel free to breathe. Just let us see some things. <laughs> okay. The California American School. Interesting. So my understanding is that reasonable sized apartments, studios, one bedrooms, those kinds of things, here in these very upscale neighborhoods in all these high rises are typically three, four, and 500 a month. Not, not outrageous. And uh, certainly not the bargains for the city. But if you're considering a long-term rental here in Cochabamba, gives you an idea of what it might cost to get into something really nice. More park down there. I'm not going to explore too far here on our first day of walking around. I'm told that dogs are very popular in this city. Oh, I can hear a whole bunch of dogs. Cute little spot for lunch, I guess. Uh, this is a cool spot where that bike path is going to go under a bridge. Brazilian flags painted on the underpass there. Remember that Brazil's just a few hundred miles away. 
tons of crossover. I hear that there's as many as 60,000 Brazilian students here just to go to college. Not sure where's the best spot to walk here. Guess we're gonna head over to the sidewalk. And here you can see the bike path emerging. Bolivia as a country has a population of about 12 million, so just a little bit smaller than twice the size of Nicaragua. But it's very physically isolated. It's amazing how isolated Bolivia is, not just as a country and as a whole, but the individual cities from each other as well. It is a collection of heavily isolated communities in a very isolated country. Some really nice buildings out here. A nice pedestrian overpass there over the road, over the, over the, the bike path. A pedestrian bridge over the bicycle underpass. This is taking gas-free transit very seriously. That is probably a really ritzy house right there. That is a really cool house in the midst of those high rises. Move past this kind of fast. Maybe you can see it. Really cool building. Looks like a hotel, but I think it's condos. So because of the geography of Bolivia, it is a very, very isolated. And in the west, it has the Andes, and they are extremely tall mountains, taller than the Rockies, second tallest mountain range in the world. And so the Andes form a very serious barrier to the west. Okay, these are nettles. We do not get nettles like this in the U.S. Look at those. I don't know where they fell from. I would not want that to fall on my head. Wow. Wow. So the western part of the country is cut off from the ocean, from Chile, from Peru, by an intense mountain range. And so that makes it very, very isolated on that side. This is not a good spot to walk for the camera. I'll just walk out into traffic. And of course the camera overheated and I didn't really notice. So back where I, this, I'm actually here the next day. I came back out to the same spot, but now it's just before noon. It's a really bright sun. I just want to mention really quickly, the sun up here at 8,000 feet is really intense. So you get, first of all, these bright blue skies, very clear. It's very dry here. So there's a lot of just intense sun. Here, we'll start walking back where we were. And so it's not so warm, but you have to be careful because you can get an awful lot of, of ultraviolet radiation up here and not realize it because you're not feeling so warm uh, and then suddenly you'll be burned. So uh, this is a cool place over here. So you just gotta be careful. Make sure you're wearing sunscreen, even though you're not, you're not out by the pool, you're not out by the ocean, you're not sitting out in the sun and it doesn't feel that intense, you feel nice and cool, you're gonna burn. So be careful, make sure you're taking precautions. Bike path is just so gorgeous, I love it. I have an amazing house coming up here on the right. Hopefully you'll be able to see it pretty well. Gate in front of it, but great yard. It'd be neat having like a regular house in this kind of neighborhood. How cool with all the high rises around. You can hear lots of birds here. about a cool place and then this is really cool too hello beautiful 
Euphoria. Dream big. So as I was saying before the the GoPro so unceremoniously overheated, which it really shouldn't because the air is nice and cool, but I guess it's thin so it doesn't cool as much, I guess. So with the mountains on the west and northwest and then the Brazilian rainforest in the northeast and east, it really leaves only a good connection to the south through Argentina as the only place that they really have an opportunity to, to mix culturally really heavily. So there's a lot of this mixing with Argentina and, and pretty much nowhere else. So Bolivia overall is a very isolated cultural zone um, with a, a lot of traditional Incan influence and some amount of Argentinian influence. But Argentina itself is relatively isolated. Not as isolated as Bolivia, but but overall, it's it's on the isolated side. I got traffic coming really fast, holy cow. Taking this little bridge. Yesterday when I was filming, I came over here and there were people climbing down over here. No idea where they're headed in this culvert, but it's not like a secret area. You can see it's just a wide open ditch under most places. But I guess in, I guess, I guess in this direction, it's not. Like in theory, you could go under the road and go somewhere, but it's open for people to just climb down on a ladder. It's very strange and it smells like a sewer. So we'll, we'll keep moving. And here's where the bike path goes around right there and then comes back and goes through the middle. So cool. This is where I made it to when I realized my camera had shut off. It wasn't too far. This is a really cool lamp store on the corner here. departments I didn't walk down this way yesterday so it's so all be new to me as I went back the other way ah, lots of like home furnishing type stores yep. imported furniture living room It is quite a bit warmer today than it was yesterday. There's more sun. It's gotta be a couple degrees warmer. Not bad, but it's, uh, it's noticeable. So when we started the video, I had shown a athletic facility near the park and that's what we're looking at up in front of us looks like i can walk through here more or less pharmacy there i'm going to spin the camera real quickly that's right, some cool graffiti over there. So this, this long building right here is low one. This is the backside of, I don't know its name, but it's, it's basically like a Walmart. It's a really large <coughs> grocery and miscellaneous, more or less everything you would need. Kind of like a normal Walmart. I had to shop there a couple times when I first got here. It was very nice. a little bit of the corner here. We're gonna head forward though. So we got one of the major roads here. Got a stoplight, so we're gonna try crossing. I told people don't really stop at the stoplights here, so we gotta be a little bit cautious. So that is right there. Let's see if we can see. That is the Fidel Anse Park again. And so if you're looking at a map, this is this area is where the big triangle is, and that's where the official park is listed on Google Maps. That is the beautiful apartment building that we started off at the beginning. Those are the flowers. So we've we've come in a big 
kind of circle back to here, but there's a little bit more park over here. So we're gonna head over and show that before we return and complete the loop. My apartment building might be that one, but I think it's the one next to it, but we're very close. Basketball is popular here. There are basketball cart courts all over the city. Still got the bicycle lane beside us. Well, this is a big, beautiful fountain. Unfortunately, it is not running. There is water in it, but not very much. We are in a drought right now, so it's probably why they don't have it on. What this? Yeah. This is a very beautiful walk though. See the park portion here plus the bike trail. This is great. It's great seeing middle of the day a lot of people out actually enjoying the park. That is it's a sign of a healthy city. little bit of a playground up there. This is a city, it's known as the City of Gardens. I think I have that right. And uh, supposedly they take their gardening very seriously. Municipal gardens all over the place. And as we've driven around the city, it's definitely true. It's a, it's a good number of parks and gardens. And, uh, see construction there, new apartment buildings going up all over the city. So much construction. We have a gazebo here. Quite a bump in the sidewalk, that was surprising. Wasn't paying attention. Some houses over there. They are watering. They're not out of water, it's just really low. bike lane has joined us and this appears to be I think the end of the park coming up see oh that's a cool building over there although that covers a lot of the windows I don't know how much I would want that this has been a really nice walk I've really enjoyed this Hope you guys like getting to see this part of the city. I'm gonna try to do more walk tomorrow. There are people walking dogs everywhere. I was told there's lots of dogs here and it, it does seem true. I see a lot of people walking dogs. The bike path continues on and it kind of has its own little itty bitty park that runs along it, but it's very minor. You can see there's even a light just for the, uh, I can't really see it on the little screen, right about there, just for the bikes so they know when they can cross. That is a really narrow apartment building. Check that out. Just squeezed in there. But it looks nice. If you're looking for a mini apartment with great views and a nice location. All right, we're going to come along the top side of this part of the park, complete the loop so you can see the whole thing. Ah, straight in front of us. That is my apartment building right there with the 
the colorful pieces. That is where I'm staying right now. And uh, in a future episode, you will find out that I was unable to extend for the whole time that I'm in Cochabamba. And so I actually managed to get another apartment in the same building. So my current apartment is on the fifth floor facing that way. And then my new one is on the third floor facing the park where we are. So very cool. Oh, there's a cafe here I didn't see before. So many cute little spots. I would love to be in the city for a few months and just go to a different restaurant every day. That would be loads of fun. We're coming up on the playground we mentioned. One thing I've noticed here about myself is that I'm out of air. But beyond that is that I'm not really hungry. Uh, at first, I had on my first day yesterday, I ate like I was back home. And now that I'm here, and, and I, I can only imagine it's the, the altitude, I'm finding that I do get hungry by later in the day. But it takes me longer to get hungry and uh, like it's at the time I'm recording this, it's noon and I'm not hungry at all. So it's normally if I was back in Nicaragua, I'd be looking for some lunch by about now. Great view of this apartment building that we're coming back up on. So this is, we showed this in a short. This is one of the chicken buses of Bolivia. These are old Dodge Ram school buses from like the 1950s, 1960s in the US. And uh, they're in terrible disrepair. They're super dangerous. Do not ride one. Absolutely do not take one. They have problems with their brakes. They're heavy polluters. Don't encourage them. They use tourists as an excuse to keep them in the city and uh, they're a major blight on the city. They look really cool going by, I admit. Absolutely neat, but it is not good for the Bolivarians. And uh, when tourists use them and make it as like a big thing, they use that as an excuse to not replace them with something fuel efficient and quiet and safe. So there's a case where there's been a problem. Oh, and we have perfect timing the explanation sign for the park. And this just brings us right back to where we started. We started right there. Those flowers, that's my apartment building high right there. This is the park. And uh, whew, that was about two and a half miles total, I think, maybe two miles. And uh, which is not, not a lot, but uh, when, uh, when you're at high altitude, you notice, but it was a nice walk. I'm really glad we went and saw the park, two parks actually, and did that loop. So definitely get down there in those comments. Let me know what you think about the walk, about the park, ask your questions about Cochabamba and Bolivia and all that. And as always, and of course, Nicaragua, we're still answering, I'm doing shorts because people are asking me so many questions about Nicaragua. As always, take a moment to like and subscribe. Take a moment to comment, even if you're just saying hi, but definitely ask questions or anything, um, leave feedback. Uh, tell me what, what camera stuff is better or worse, if the microphone's good or bad or whatever. What, what things matter to you, I don't always know. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel, which would mean a lot to me, and help me. The more you guys support the channel, one of the, one of the goals. So first, okay, if you want to support the channel, I'm going to put it on the screen. It's buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. Just go to that, and that comes directly to me. That's full on to me. Um, where I really want to go with the channel is I want to be able to spend about half the year in my, my home of Nicaragua. And I want to spend about half the year, probably a little bit less than half, um, out traveling and doing stuff like this. This was for work, so this is a little bit different. But I want to get out. I want to take crew with me. I want to be able to explore. I want to be able to uh, go to lots of, of interesting places, especially around Latin America, but other places too. But re I really want to focus on getting all over Latin America and bringing you guys um, comparative content 
right? I want to be able to show different regions, different cities, different countries, um, different, you know, uh, political situations and different living situations and housing and real estate and parks and like what it's like to live in these different cities. Because for me, right, this is the content I would want. Um, not that I'm saying I'm making the perfect content for myself. I'm just saying what I like to see is going into real cities and seeing real, real Airbnbs, like actual apartments that people might actually live in. How much would it cost? How much does it cost to rent? What would life be like if I lived here? If you wanted to live in Bolivia, if you wanted to live in Cochabamba here in the middle of the country, which not a lot of, not a lot of foreigners do, but a number, right? You'll have no problem finding Americans here. Um, but it's not a touristy city. Uh, but you know, what would it cost? Could you live here for $300 a month in rent? Yes, you absolutely could. Could you have an amazing place for 500? Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, would you, would you be able to get a house here? Would, what are your options? Now, one of the harder things is staying, you know, your, your tourist visa doesn't make it super easy for an American to just stay here. We're going to move a little bit away from the road. It's just uh, a little bit too loud. And, uh, you know, Bolivia is a little bit complicated if you're a North American and want to come here long term. They're not on the best of terms with the United States, so they're not they're not specifically making it super easy. But there are Americans doing it. It is an option. It is a friendly, safe country with beautiful cities and beautiful parks. And you could have a really neat lifestyle here. But being able to bring content that show different regions like it's so hard to get out and see so many different places and, and have an idea like Without this, how do you know what Cochabamba even looks like? How would you even consider it without coming and spending it? And then you're like, oh, that's not the one for me. And then you go to another city. It would take forever as you bounce from city to city trying to find a place that might fit your needs. Whereas I really want to produce content that lets you survey every city, right? I want to see everything in Latin America, every city above a certain size or within a certain type in every different region and see them. And say, that, one, that one piques my interest then you can move there. Then you can spend six months and make it a really good informed decision or, or, or have a short list that makes sense. And that's so difficult because there's so little content that shows the non-touristy stuff. So I hope you guys like this. That is really where I want to get. And, and when you buy me a coffee, that really helps. And of course, when you like and subscribe and all that, all that stuff helps make this something that I'll be able to afford to do because really to do it, I've got to bring um, for part of the year, like my whole family with me. And we, we've got plans to do that. And, and we're definitely going to do that. But it's, sometimes I need to travel like on my own, but I need to take someone who can film with me because like on this trip, it really shows that, especially because I, I still do have to do some normal work and a lot of it in this particular case, um, that it's absolutely exhausting and I can't get to sit down and edit. I can't get to a whole bunch of things. Oh, we got another bus coming by. I just could get I'm going to be doing exactly the thing I say not to do. Don't don't film them, encourage people to use them. But these are the real city buses. They're actually going around the city. People use them all the time. But you can you can tell that is not that's not economically sound to be using those kinds of buses. Even if they were able to well maintain them, which they are not, it does not make sense to run something that old and that non fuel efficient and gas guzzling and difficult to maintain. It's just crazy. Um, but, uh, but that makes it possible. And I have to bring someone because I have so much that I have to do that. I'm like really struggling. I'm going from, from 7am to midnight every day that I'm here, just trying to film what little bit I can get it uploaded, get it backed up. And I'm nowhere close. Like I'm falling behind on the editing, which is cool. I got way ahead before I came. I'm prepared for that, but I'm not keeping up at the pace that I would need to keep up. Now, of course, if I was staying here for, say, two weeks and didn't have to do other work and I didn't have, like, these constant meetings going on because I'm having meetings every few hours, um, if I wasn't doing that, then being able to, to take an afternoon, edit two videos, do a little bit of catch up, that would be possible. On this trip, it's not. Um, but to be able to move quickly from place to place and get a lot more content, um, I need to have someone who's traveling with me when I do that to have any hope of pulling that off. So um, that, is a, that is a challenge and that's something that I need to figure out. And so... If you buy me a coffee, that that helps make that possible. That and the equipment for all this, it's all it's all pretty intense um, that it requires. So thanks for joining me. Uh, share on social media, post on the Facebooks and all that stuff, and I will see all of you from Cochabamba once again tomorrow.